Okay, welcome back to Stu's Aircraft Factory. Today we're going to talk about lag combing engines uh, like we promised in the last couple videos. Uh, the first thing to talk about is uh, we're not going to get into the debate over lag combing versus uh, automotive engines. I do have experience with both, but why do we use these lag combing engines? The biggest reason is simplicity. So they're air cooled, so we don't need any coolant system like you'd require on an automotive uh, engine and they're very very simple so they are direct drive engines which means that there's no gearbox so the engine's turning at 2700 rpm then the prop is turning at 2700 rpm so there's a direct drive between the prop and the engine so it's very very simple and the other reason we use them really is power to weight so an automotive engine be quite heavier than a, than a light combing engine because all the uh, extra systems that need to go onto it. So the power that this engine produces compared to its weight is actually quite good. So that's the far as we're going to go for the debate between light combing engines and any other engines out there. But that's really why we use it is because it's super simple. Now, even though they are so simple, this might be the first time that you're dealing with an air-cooled engine. So we'll go over the basics of it what all the ports are, the parts are, what's included, typically when it arrives um, at your garage or at your hangar, and then what you are gonna have to add. So let's just talk about generally what you would get from the company. Um, so when the engine arrives, obviously you got the main case in the middle, you got the cylinders attached to it, and you have the flywheel at the front that has the little teeth along the edge, which is what the starter is going to engage. Also, some companies may or may not include spark plug wires, so, but they will probably supply them, so you might have to make them yourself, but this one came with the spark plug wires and all the plugs on the top of the cylinder and the bottom of the cylinder, all done already. It'll typically come with a starter because they'll use that in the test stand or the dyno stand. Um, and it will come with the fuel system so whether that's a carburetor or a fuel injection, uh, it will likely come with that as well. It might be some variation on how you mount it like we've done on this engine, but this one's fuel injected, so it does have the fuel injector on the bottom, and it has the spider fuel injector on the top. And the last thing that it'll probably include is the ignition system and obviously there's a little bit of variation there whether you go with slick mags or in our case uh, we went with dual p mag setup and there's lots of electronic ignition options out there so in discussion with the, your provider the engine will come most likely with all of the ignition system complete so that they can be tested on the test stand and that is pretty much it so when you get the engine from the company, um, there is still a lot of work to do, a lot of stuff to add um, and build. Uh, like I mentioned in the previous videos, actually mounting this engine pretty quick, something like 20, 25 minutes if it all goes fairly well, and then putting all the peripheral systems on and all the hoses and the wiring and everything, that's a good month of work. So. Um, after you saw the engine installation video, we've been working on this engine for almost a month now to get it where, where it is right now, including all the baffling and everything. So we're only going to talk about the, the 320 and 360 series engines here. Uh, this, this engine started out as an IO360. Now I meaning fuel injected, O meaning horizontally opposed cylinders, and 360 meaning the total displacement of the, of the engine in cubic inches. So four cylinders divided by 360, you can do the math of each cylinder puts out uh, a quarter of that displacement for a 360. Uh, this one is stroked a little bit as you may have seen in the previous videos. So the cylinder actually moves up and down a little bit more. Um, that strokes it out to an IO409. So the, this is a 409 cubic inch engine which will then produce a little bit more power. Typically the 360 engine will be 180 horsepower with standard compression. This one is gonna put out about 215 horsepower. Okay, so let's talk about um, the parts of the engine just to make it all clear. Obviously we got four cylinders horizontally opposed 
um, spark plugs in the top and the bottom, fuel injection spider on the top with the fuel injector line going to each cylinder. So now let's talk about some of the ports on the back and I'll take the camera around the, around the engine as we talk about this. So on the back of the engine, there's gonna be several ports hanging off it and there is some reasonable documentation from the builder companies of what uh, all these are now. Uh, when I started building, there was very little instruction on the actual installation of Lycoming engines. So on the back, you're gonna have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of nipples that either pressure lines or fuel lines are gonna be hooked up to or oil lines are gonna be hooked up to. Typically the small ones, the AN4 connectors, are going to be pressure lines. So you're gonna have manifold pressure lines. Sorry, jet's flying over. So you'll see a lot of AN fittings hanging off the back of the engine. Uh, typically, the AN4 lines are gonna be for pressure. So you're gonna have manifold pressure, fuel pressure, oil pressure. In this case, on this engine, we have an actual oil return line for the breather, which we'll talk about later. Then AN6, a little bit bigger, is going to be fuel. And then even bigger than that, AN8 is going to be for oil lines going to and from your oil cooler. So if we look on the back of the engine, so we'll start on the top back of the engine and I'll just describe everything as we go around so you can look at your own Lycoming engine and see what's what. So in the very back center of the engine, there will be a threaded port here that may or may not have a cap on it. And that is for an actual um, tachometer connection, a manual, or correction, a, a mechanical tachometer connection. Not typically used for electronic ignition where you're just going to take your tachometer electronically. Uh, so that, in our case here, that gets covered up and safety wired. Uh, right beside that, you'll have a hose port coming out the top of the engine, and that is your breather line. And the typical way or the easiest way to install that is simply going to be a hose coming off, transitioning into something metal, probably a aluminum tube, and then that terminates at the top of the exhaust. And that's really all you need for the breather uh, of the engine. Um, but there are other options out there. So in our case here, we go from the breather line to an oil separator. That oil separator will then go to work down to the exhaust, and this is called an anti-splat system on this one. And then there's an actual oil return line, so some of the separated oil from the air oil separator will go back into the engine on an AN4 fitting on the other side. Okay, so let's talk about the fuel now. So obviously from the wing tanks, fuel goes into the cockpit, goes to a selector valve. After that, it'll probably go to an inline filter and then it'll go to an electric boost pump. And that electric boost pump is gonna be your backup, the one that you're gonna use for takeoff and landing and the one that you're gonna use in emergencies if the mechanical fuel pump on the engine quits. After the electric uh, fuel pump, it's gonna go through the firewall. And then from the firewall, it is then gonna go to the right side of the fuel pump, the mechanical fuel pump. And then from the left side of the mechanical fuel pump, we are then gonna go forward to the fuel injector or the carburetor, whichever, whichever one that you're using on your airplane. You may have a fuel flow indicator in there, so you'll have to obviously install that somewhere and there's debate on that as well as, as where it goes. I've never had any issues with the fuel flow in, in my airplanes. And then from the fuel injector, it's then gonna come up in between the number one and number three cylinders and connect into the spider, which the fuel spider will then distribute the fuel to each cylinder. So that's the fuel system, fairly simple. Uh, fuel pressure now. So use a special uh, T-fitting, not really a T-fitting, but it's, a, it's an angle fitting that then has a hole in the side that you can thread an AN4 fitting into. And from that AN4 fitting, we're then gonna go to our fuel pressure uh, sensor, which is then gonna turn the pressure into electricity and that electricity or that electrical signal is then gonna go to our display in the cockpit giving us fuel pressure. Okay, oil pressure. 
Oil pressure comes from the top uh, right side of the engine typically, kind of right underneath the engine mount. It's something that you probably want to install before you mount the engine because the port is quite difficult to get to. And it may or may not already be installed by the engine manufacturer. So if you're ordering a Lycoming engine, maybe it's a smart thing to ask them to install that A and 4 fitting for you for the oil pressure. So again, from that oil pressure fitting under the top right side of the engine, that again is gonna to go to an oil pressure sender. And even though it looks the same, it's not. It's obviously a different pressure range. And on the, uh, on the side of the cylinder is where we take the manifold pressure from. So you may or may not have to install that fitting yourself as well. And then again, running another AN4 line uh, from that manifold pressure sender to again um, switch it over to an electrical signal and then forward to the cockpit for manifold pressure. Uh, if you're running fixed pitch prop then you may or may not want manifold pressure since you can't really change it um, but for constant speed prop operation you want manifold pressure indication. Okay so that's those fittings. Now oil fittings are going to be the larger A and 8 ones so there's going to be one um, just on the left side of the engine near the top. And then there's a second oil fitting pretty much right underneath where the oil filter attaches. And, uh, and uh, both of those lines are going to run to your oil cooler, which is not mounted yet in this engine. So we're just going over the parts of the engine. This is not necessarily a how-to because the 100% installation of this engine is not yet complete. Obviously you have an oil filter in the back which will have a variable installation. Some of them are horizontal, some of them are vertical. There might be some um, 90 degree fittings on there. So that does vary a little bit depending on your installation. We ended up going horizontal in this one um, because the vertical tilted one we couldn't actually use in this RV4 installation since it would hit the actual engine mount like you may have seen in the previous videos. Uh, right beside the oil filter, we have oil temperature and we have a PMEG set up in ours. So for our installation, we're gonna have a few wires uh, going to the magneto. Okay, other thing that's not gonna be included is uh, the exhaust. So you'll have to probably buy that separately for your model of aircraft and install it. The exhaust on this, on this aircraft is uh, ceramic coated, which you see why it's a little bit shinier than, than the other exhaust systems that you may have seen. And then you have the baffling along the side. Obviously, you're gonna to have to do this yourself as well. And we did the one video on the basics of the baffling. We'll actually do a second one showing, you know, how we run wires through it, how we put cooling, uh, cooling rings in here for the PMAGs, and then we'll build a plenum on top of this. So the baffling, of course, is something that you're gonna to have to do on your own. Although there is kits that will start you nicely with the general shape kind of around the engine. So the kit is very worth it. So I hope that helps you in your build. So you can see that, you know, the basics of the Lycoming engine, you get the case in the cylinders, the fuel system, the ignition system, uh, starter, spark plug, spark plug wires, and that might be pretty much it. Uh, so you are going to have to install the alternator. This one has a preheat system on it, so I'll need to install that. Uh, obviously we need to do all the baffling, we need to do the exhaust, all the, ex all the probes, so the exhaust gas temperature probes, cylinder head temperature probes, fuel flow, oil temperature, oil pressure, fuel pressure, manifold pressure, um, running a breather line, wh whether you have an oil separator or not, up to you, and then running all the cables down for the throttle and the mixture and the prop control to the engine as well. So. After installing the engine, 20 minutes, you have a good month of uh, steady work getting it all uh, sorted out um, to get ready to actually, um, actually run it. So hopefully we'll be running this engine uh, in less than a month from now is kind of the ideal. We're gonna run it with the wings on so we can have actual fuel in the tanks and everything. So that's, the engine is almost completely done. We just have to do basically the oil cooler, and attach the throttle and the mixture cables properly and then a few tidying up with all the wires and then that should be pretty much it for the engine installation of this one.
so hope that helps you in your build. Build something, take it for a rip, and we'll see you on the next video. Cheers.